She got the Hitachi, man. Bro, holy fuck, dude. Okay, there are some people that move here to Japan that should never be here. Okay, why? Well, because they think Japan is... Uh, not what it is. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go into excruciating detail about this person, but let's just say this person liked anime. Okay. We all like anime, right? That's nothing too crazy. You know, we, we all enjoy a little bit of, a little bit of anime. Well, this guy's life was anime, dude. Okay. He wanted Japan to be anime. Now he was this nice boy from California, sweet guy, but he would, he would like cosplay and come decked out to like meetings in full on cosplay. And this is like, you know, like an office. Okay. Um, there was one time he had like an event he wanted to mingle with the local college students for a language exchange okay you know no harm no foul i guess oh, yeah the local anime people that's right okay so he organized this event and said ethel do you want to come too and i said oh and miss this total shit show oh guess what i'm not missing it baby i'll be there okay now i didn't know who was gonna show up what kind of people were gonna be there ethel i think i've seen this in a hentai before the word is for me. <laughs> yeah oh, it gets worse man now i show up to the party I'll give him this. Everyone that showed up was actually really cool. Like the Japanese guys were really sweet and nice and they just wanted to practice English. The the girls were really cool. I mean, there's there's a stigma, dude. I'll be honest. There is a stigma of foreign people living in Japan that they are just like big weebs and are just there for like their anime fantasy. And there there was there was some folks like that where like the conversation just always goes back to like enter quotes Japanese culture, aka anime and in video games. Okay, and that's fine. Like Japanese nerd culture, but there's just so much more so there was a really cool a really cool guy who i made friends with and we made plans to go to an amusement park together just two bros that that was awesome he was a really cool guy uh there was a really hot girl that was at the party too and we you know it just we we're talking and stuff like that is fine nothing too crazy so i was i was feeling good man like I, I wanted to like keep hanging out with everybody and just keep having fun like everyone there was so fun and and the night was still young it was only like gosh like 8 p.m so one of the japanese guys was like yeah let's go to a bar and we'll get some drinks and i was like yeah hell yeah so everybody went we had fun we were just drinking and talking and just laughing and goofing off and it was really fun now we get to the point of the night where it's like almost like 10 p.m 11 p.m and a few of the people were like you know we gotta go and then some of the other people were like you know we should all like keep hanging out and i was like yeah dude i'm down like is there another bar to go to and my friend uh uh, what name can I give him? My friend Daniel was like, oh, you guys can come over to my house. Now, Daniel was the guy who organized this party. He was like the, the prime weeb. And because it was his party, you know, he kind of took charge and was like, yeah, you guys can come back to my house and we can party there. And I was like, yeah, okay. I wonder what his house is going to be like. So I'm like, yeah, sure. And then the cool guy that like I made friends with, he was going to go. Uh, the cute girl, she was going to go too, you know, and then all the other cool people were going to go too. And it was just going to be like a nice, a nice time. So we we all take a taxi back. I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was. I was trying to spit game. All right. I'm a. I'm a healthy young man. All right. And I was spitting game respectfully. Now we we pull up to the house, and you know, at, at this point, whenever I get drunk. Like, you know how there's some people that get, like, angry drunk or, like, sad drunk or, like, tired drunk? I always just start fucking laughing my ass off at everything. So, well, <laughs> I was kind of at that point. We roll up to this dude's house. There's maybe, like, ten of us total. Open it and just the immediate smell of putrid, crusted, moldy, sweaty asshole slapped me in the face. Now, me being drunk and thinking everything is funny, when I walked in, I said, Oh my god, it smells like shit shit in here dude and i felt so fucking bad looking back on it now if you would have smelled it you would have said the exact same fucking thing and i looked over at my buddy's face and he was just like oh, okay yeah he's just like always like nodding his head and smiling so he was just like ah, yeah then I, I looked over at the cute girl's face and she just you know like when your mouth like slightly opens when you're like watching like a horror movie it's like not all the way open but it's just like no expression on her face whatsoever and we're walking through the house there's like trash fucking everywhere dude he used to have a trash can but now it is like a trash mountain there's trash bags everywhere he used to have a table now it's just a mountain of fucking trash and like paper plates and like bottles and like computer boxes it looked like if they had you know how they have the show hoarders it looked like that show but like the teen nick version it was so 
fucked. Now we all walk into the living room and sit down and I just instantly start fucking sneezing my ass off, dude. I thought I was in an Indiana Jones movie, dude. There was so much dust and this dude had only been living there for like three months. I don't even know how you do that. Before I even was able to like fully sit down, I was like, I have to pee first. I walk into the bathroom, dude. Now I couldn't hear it, but what all the people in the living room heard coming from the bathroom was just me opening the door and then saying, holy shit. Dude, a fucking cockroach in a fucking butler uniform said, oh, may I take your jacket, sir? <laughs> what? Would you like to freshen up? Wait, who, who the fuck are you? Oh, I'm the night staff. My name's Antonio. Wait, what? Dude, it looked like the bathroom from fucking Saw without the dead bodies, okay? And I'm, I'm not over-exaggerating, dude. It legitimately looked like the bathroom from Saw. Now, these apartments that he had to stay in were old. It was a fucking nightmare, dude. I felt like if I closed the door all the way, I would be transported to Silent Hill. So I peed with the door wide open. And the one time I'll ever pee with the lights on, dude. Okay, because I didn't want a fucking cockroach to come crawling up my fucking shaft. Dagger dick, it was exposed. <laughs> Let me slap my vape real fast, man. This next part is gonna hurt to tell you. I'll finish up in the bathroom, come back out. Now, everybody's sitting, so there's no more seats for me, so I'm just gonna sit on the floor. Now, in, in this apartment, there's like a sliding door that separates the living room from his bedroom. So I go to sit at the coffee table, and I'm sitting down, but the table's like really close to the door. And my friend Daniel was like, oh yeah, you can just open up that door if you need more space. And I was like, oh cool, like, you know, what does this door go into? He's like, oh, that goes into my bedroom. And I was like, oh. Oh, you're cool with me opening this door to your bedroom? in front of all of these people we just met including the the really cute girl that's here right now and a cool guy that just smiles and nods to everything and he said yeah yeah oh you can open it that's fine and so i did and i was surprised just a bed in there the biggest box of tissues i've ever seen in my whole life a hitachi self massager a jar of lotion not a bottle a jar an insane collection of various mangas and magazines from the kombini clothes fucking everywhere you name it it was in there man it looked like a goodwill donation box now me being being drunk and thinking that everything is hilarious. I assumed that everybody could see inside this room. So I said, yo, Daniel, why do you have this Hitachi self massager right next to your bed, dude? And he said, oh yeah, I love that thing. He's so, so just like uncaring and has no idea like how any of this looks. I was just like, oh my God, dude, this guy is amazing. And that's when it clicked. To me, it was weird. It clicked, dude. This guy is living how we all should. Now, not obviously physically, we should all clean our place so that we don't fucking get black lung, but he's living mentally how we all should. No shame in his game. He's not hurting anybody. In fact, he's doing the opposite. He's pleasuring himself and he has no shame, dude, and you shouldn't have any shame about that. And as soon as he said that, it clicked, dude. I sobered up instantly and I said, holy shit. Kind of disappointed there was no hostage in his room. I didn't finish the story yet. <laughs> Just wait. Now, with that said, he invited us all into his bedroom and showed us everything he had. And the girls are playing with the Hitachi and the fucking one guy wrapped himself up in all the tissues like a little mummy. Now, as we were doing this and all giggling around and just being like, what the fuck is happening? I see something out of the corner of my eye creeping from the closet. It didn't look like anything else I'd seen. And I said, hey, Daniel, what's what's that in your closet? And he said, oh, you want to meet Miku-chan? And I said, no, not really. And he said, here, I'll introduce you to her. And I said, oh, God. Oh, please, God, please don't. I don't want to be involved in a felony activity because I think you kidnapped someone. And he said, <laughs> then he walked over to the closet and he pulled out a fucking life-size fucking doll. And I'll admit she was stunning. I'll admit she was hot. It was a blow-up doll. He had a full life-size blow-up doll just chilling in his closet. And I obviously did not fucking touch it or get within six feet of it. He was like, yeah, this is Miku-chan. She's my good friend. And I said, oh, great to meet you. Uh, you look great. And she said, And I said, ah, oh, Miku-chan, you're so funny. <laughs> Where'd you learn that joke from? And then she said, and then I said, ah, oh, oh Miku-chan, wow, you're really nice. I don't know. It was kind of beautiful how like open he was with all this stuff that we would view as weird. It was like, I don't know if that's something you want to show like random people you just met, but there was something nice about it. Now, at, at this point, we had been in this house for so long that I was having, I think, a hallucination at this point. I was inhaling so much dust and I, I couldn't even spit game anymore because I had all these emotions rolling through my whole body. So I, I went up to the cute girl that I had been talking to and I said, hey, do you want to just go somewhere else? And she said, yes, I can't breathe anymore. <laughs> Hey you, 